Well, good morning and welcome again to another edition of Community Spotlight on 96.3 KRIM, coming to you as we do on the first Tuesday of every month from Plant Fair Nursery. And today we're going to be talking about uh, what's bugging you, basically. Uh, and, uh, you know, while we are talking about it today, if you'd like to actually see what we're doing, you can uh, log on to uh, KRIM's Facebook page and uh, see us live on there right now, as well as Plant Fair Nursery's Facebook page. And again, you can uh, not only hear what we're talking about, but watch as well. Uh, today, uh, talking with uh, the owner here at Plant Fair Nursery, Glenn McComb. And Glenn, we're talking about what's bugging people, and this time of year, it's bugs. Right, there's, uh, well, there's bugs and weeds. Bugs and weeds. Yeah, so okay. uh, first thing we're going to talk about is just kind of a review of our bug condition. So uh, what I've done is uh, uh, I've uh, divided the uh, uh, bug killers up into two different sections. So the first section over that we'll talk about is a uh, uh, all natural or organic type bug killers. So uh, we're hearing from the vegetable gardeners that they've got all kinds of squash bugs and all kinds of uh, different kinds of bugs. Everything from aphids, squash bugs to little beetles that we can't even describe. Wow. So um, the um, uh, the recommended one is triple action by Fertilome. And uh, it's uh, basically it's neem oil and pyrethrum. So uh, that will uh, kill out most all of those bugs. It makes like a little sheen on the leaf and uh, that will uh, uh, help kill them out. And it's a good idea just to spray it. If you see any bugs, spray the whole entire thing, not just that individual bug. So triple action is uh, the one that we recommend highly. Uh, there's also another one on the market called Spinosad. And sp what Spinosad does is like a soap. So you spray it on the, uh, the bug itself and it acts, uh, uh, suffocates them basically is what it does. And then uh, Spinosad also is a virus and the virus then uh, stays right on that leaf where anything that gets on the leaf is gonna get this virus. So wow. uh, that uh, uh, is uh, Spinosad soap. And uh, both of them are safe, and uh, uh, both of them will kill almost all of the bugs. Uh, there's always that bug that's going to get by, and you just can't help. But usually the ones that really invade, these will get, both of these will get them. And the third one we have here is uh, uh, Caterpillar Killer Spray, which is BT or Bacillus thuringiensis, which is easy for me to say. Yeah, and sure. uh, it's uh, uh, strictly for the larva of a moth. Hmm. So that's the uh, tomato hornworm, it's uh, cabbage loopers, it's all of those. And that's going on right now, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's some out there right now. As a matter of fact, at one of the community gardens, they're going to have a, uh, a black light night where they take a black night, a, a black light, and the, that tomato hornworm will show up if it's on your tomato plant. So they have fun. They go out and go to all of the tomatoes and see if they can't find a, a tomato hornworm and then dispose of right. it. So, now, I, I gotta ask a, a dumb question. Does any of this actually work on mosquitoes? Because when we're out in the garden, at least down at my place, I know that's, that seems to be an increasing challenge down there. I do have another one for, I didn't bring one, but uh, uh, there is another one that will get rid of it. We also have a plant called uh, uh, citronella, which uh, you can plant out like or around or in pots around your deck, and that will keep the mosquitoes away. Oh. But the very best thing is find where they live and uh, use a mosquito dunk which we do sell here. And uh, you just throw it out in the pond, covers about 25 square feet, and uh, it just suffocates the, uh, uh, the little larva that's down in the ground and you'll really reduce the, the pressure. Makes sense. So, uh, 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 yeah, so anyway, those are gonna be the three organics. That's just kind of a review of what we've talked about before. So now this being organic too, this is something that uh, is still, although it's uh, not good for the bugs, it's not really uh, bad for you as far as the whatever vegetables you're growing That's and things right. like that. Yeah, you, you, well, you should always wash your vegetables sure. no matter what you use, but because this is a concentrate. But uh, the main thing is it doesn't really affect you. It, it's harmless to humans, and it also won't affect the ground. So a lot of the chemicals, which I'll show in a second, uh, they stay for a long time. That's why they work so well. And uh, eventually they can build up in the soil. Uh, there's been a lot of cases back east and in the Midwest where it's upset water uh, conditions, wow. you know, gets down in the wells and gets in the water supplies. And uh, so uh, we're trying to steer everybody toward organics. You have to understand that organics don't work as well as chemicals. Chemicals just 
kills them dead. I mean, they roll over on their back and kick their little legs, and, and uh, that's basically what people want to see, but it doesn't go away right away. It is a chemical, so it has to be digested over a longer period of time. It, eventually, it goes away, but not quickly. Makes sense. So, uh, the, um, uh, in the chemical line uh, for vegetables, this is uh, seven, and I'm not sure why they named it seven, but the way I look at it is it says right on the directions that if you spray it on your vegetable garden, you wait seven days before you harvest. So my guess is that's where they came up with the, with the name seven. And uh, it, it is, uh, kills over 500 different kinds of bugs. It will kill everything but aphids on your, your vegetable crop, on your ornamentals, that's trees like these, or bushes like these down here, shrubs, anything. It's a good overall uh, uh, bug killer. And uh, we certainly recommend using it. If you have a big infestation and these little organics are not working very well and it's not on your food crop, we recommend a chemical. You don't have to spray daily. You don't have to build up in your soil. What you need to do mainly is uh, get rid of that population and then don't use it again for a while unless you have another big, big so this map. is put in a broadcast sprayer and you're just kind of spraying everything down with that That's then? right. Okay. Spray all the bushes, rub it, it'll get spiders, it'll actually get mosquitoes. Does it'll it work get, on in-laws? Um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so uh, uh, another one, which is a really an old one, is malathion. This is 55% malathion. Uh, it's good for all those little beetles and bugs and that sort of thing. It's been around. I've been doing this since the 60s and it was the, the key in the 60s and it's still a real, real good one for a chemical and you can use it the same way you do seven. Probably doesn't kill as many bugs, but right now a lot of people are seeing the little, what they call spittle bug. And what it looks like is cow slobber that's on their ornamental trees like this or bushes like these. And, uh, uh, and if the, the slobber is usually probably about maybe an inch long, and it just looks like a cow tried to eat it and left, oh. his, left his slobber on his salvia, uh, saliva Darn rather cow. on it. And uh, this will kill that. So uh, hmm. you can just spray on there and then that will uh, that'll get rid of that, uh, uh, that little guy. But old time, you know, they even use this. I remember uh, they used malathion to spray in LA in the, in the 60s to get rid of the fruit fly. So right. it's been around a long time. If EPA hasn't taken it off yet, it's not that bad. So it must, it must not have contaminated water supplies and right. all of that sort of thing. So anyway, so that's the next chemical. Then uh, this one is for P38, is for any subterranean type bug, which means ants, termites, anything that's gonna be down below the ground. This is the same thing that if you build a new house and they require a termite inspection and you have to spray, this is what, the, what they're gonna use. They'll probably use a little stronger because I can only sell a certain strength. Uh, but it's permethrin is what it is and it's a really good uh, bug killer. We recommend it mostly for uh, uh, for subterranean, you can use it on bushes and shrubs, but we like to see it just used on, on the ground itself because this is the one that will, that will work. So uh, uh, that is a review of all of, the, um, uh, all of the insecticides that you can and should use. There is a bazillion different kinds of uh, 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 brand names out there. And uh, I suppose as long as it says what those component parts, which would be seven malathion or permethrin, you know, you can use any any brand. We happen to do these because we know they work. Right. Uh, the high yield uh, especially is a uh, commercial, uh, it comes from uh, uh, agriculture. And they, they used to just supply nothing but farms. And uh, then everybody got jealous that they, homeowners got jealous, they couldn't buy the agricultural farm stuff. So they started putting it in smaller uh, containers so that we could buy it and uh, reduce it a little bit instead of that real, real, real strong stuff. So, so now we've been talking about bugs that are bugging people, but bugs aren't the only thing that are bugging people right now. That's right. It's weeds. And uh, <laughs> well, with the recent few, rains, yeah. I know down in Tano Basin where I'm at, it's amazing the color that's come up out of the ground just yeah. in the last two weeks. Yeah, this, uh, this whole entire pasture that we're standing in was completely weed eated about two weeks ago maybe three weeks now. And if you were to look at it, it's just completely packed with weeds wow. all over the place. It doesn't hurt anything down here. We want it. We want sure. it to control erosion and Makes that sense, sort of yeah. thing. But still, 
they're growing like a weed. Right. Yeah. So and in and amongst everything else you're trying to grow, that can be a problem. Yeah. So and I've divided these down too in uh, uh, into separate ones where the, there's organics and then there's uh, uh, chemicals. So uh, well, first we'll talk about the chemical and what all the and what all they do, because most of the uh, the weed killers we're really not too concerned about uh, food crops. Because if it's in your food crop, in your garden, you're not going to be spraying it with a weed killer. Usually a hula hoe or a hoe or something like that is going to get rid of the, uh, uh, the weeds out of, your, uh, uh, out of your garden. At least I wouldn't recommend any of these, even the organics in your vegetable garden. Right. Um, so the very first one I have over here is, uh, this is weed and feed. And uh, this one is for those of you who have lawns. And uh, I bring it up because a lot of folks are looking for weed and feed so that they can just do one application on their lawn. And uh, that's the whole idea of this. But there is, if you read the directions, there is a, uh, a key to this. So uh, what you do is you water your lawn real, real good. Then you apply the weed and feed. And then when the weed and feed, uh, you, uh, after you get done applying, don't water your lawn for two days. And so what happens is you're, you're spreading fertilizer and weed killer on your lawn. The weed killer sets down on the weeds and it will kill the weeds, but it will not kill the grass. So it's, just, it's selective. It will not kill, kill grass. And then after two days, you water it. And what it'll do then is it takes the fertilizer on down into the roots. And then that fertilizes your lawn. A lot of people go ahead and put it on and then water right away to get it down into the ground. Well, that negates the whole idea of the weed killer. The fertilizer will work fine, but it won't kill the weeds. Right. So we like to, like to give people that <coughs> bit of information because we want that to work. Right. Kills dandelions, kills a lot of, lot of different kinds of broadleaf weeds in your lawn. Um, the next one we have on here is uh, a, uh, uh, a pre-emergent. There's two different ways to do pre-emergent. This particular one is uh, weed and grass stopper. And basically what you're doing with that is you, you clean like an area with like your driveway or along your driveway um, and, uh, or an area, uh, let's say you've rocked your lawn or you put granite on your lawn or where you had lawn and you don't want those weeds to come back, you don't want the grass to come back, you don't want anything to come back, but the seeds keep, keep bringing them back up again, especially goat heads and, and uh, that sort of thing. So what you do is you put the pre-emergent on, and I do have it in bigger bags for bigger areas, like this one only covers about 1,000 square feet, but a big bag will cover about 5,000 square feet. And you just put it on with a cedar, so you're through the cedar that you kind of crank and put it all out, uh, to cover about 5,000 feet. Then you water it in and it will make a barrier about two inches thick. And uh, anything that tries to germinate within that two inches then will go ahead and uh, kill it as soon as it comes out of the seed. And that's this one here? That's this one right here. Oh, and that's this, this is a granule. And then this one is a liquid. So the liquid does exactly the same thing. The only difference is, is you spray it on. I'm picking up one of these before I leave here today. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I have a need. Works real, real good. I, you know, because you go through all the work to hula ho and clean. Right. And then you go inside, you have a, a glass of iced tea or your favorite beverage, and you come back out and you see weeds again. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's about how it works. It's, uh, uh, it's good to put that down. And then again, you wouldn't put that in your, where you've had food crops. But you do put it out in those areas where they're kind of plain and... Yeah. and, and you you uh, got my attention when you said it takes care of goat heads because we got a bunch yeah. of those that, yeah. that uh, despite our, our best uh, uh, laid plans, just right. keep coming back. Of course, that goat head is a real tough customer yeah. and it may not get all of them. You may, it may take one or two applications to get it, but you will get it. We've had people, there's a fellow here in Star Valley that uh, took care of two acres of uh, weeds before he moved and built a house on it. And uh, by using that very thing. Took him two years, but weedless. Wow. In two years. Worked real, real well. Very interesting. So that's this, uh, this as a granule and this as a weed. So the next one we have on here is called Weed Free Zone. And Weed Free Zone, what it does is uh, uh, it's just a regular selective weed killer. You can put it on where you have, uh, where you have your lawn. 
and uh, uh, but it kills really tough weeds like uh, California milkweed and, and, and that sort of thing. But the good thing about this one is you can apply it when it's cool. So uh, meaning like in the fall when uh, these other weed killers don't work because they need heat, this one works in the cool weather. Right. So um, uh, we highly recommend that uh, either early in the spring. So people want to get out there and start putting a weed killer on as early as March, maybe even February or as March. Well, in March, it will start working in March where some of these other products that I'll show, um, uh, it's got to have heat. It's got to have 80, 90, 100 degrees before they actually work, work right. real, real well. So it gives us an opportunity to kill weeds before without without would. sweating quite so much yeah there you go <laughs> yeah so uh, the next one is brush killer and uh, lots of here in the Payson area where we build houses in the forest there's a, a little uh, a little bush called wait a minute vine and uh, if anybody's gone hiking in the in the raw uh, forest, uh, you, you run across those because they do very, very well here and they grow wild. Of course, there's nobody to clean them up. So it's one of those things where you're going along and they go, oh, wait a minute. Yep. And uh, uh, it's real woody. So what you do in your property is you go ahead and cut it back to a, say less about five or six inches and then you take the uh, uh, the weed and brush killer and you uh, or stump and brush killer and you uh, apply it to that little stump and it will translocate down into the roots and it will kill it out from there wow. so uh, that's uh, uh, a lot of people are looking especially here in town we've got uh, scrub oak and uh, scrub oak, you know, if you've ever tried to get rid of scrub oak, it's just insane. So you cut it down, and actually we recommend you let it grow back up about four to six inches, and then you spray with that. And the reason why we recommend that you cut them back or that you cut the weight of mint vine back or any kind of thing, brush you're trying to get rid of, is you just use less. And although we would love to sell bottles and bottles and bottles of that, there's really no need to do that. Cut it back, use it, get it on the smallest part because it will translate down into the into the or transmit down into the uh, uh, root itself and kill out at least that portion of the root. And that scrub oak, I mean, those roots go down just about to China, don't they? Yeah, they're they're just massive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crazy. And and it's not an easy thing, you know. It'll die here and then you'll see it pop over there. Yep. So you always keep a spray bottle and just just spray that those that you see popping up early and then that way it can kill that out and go on down. I'm personally getting rid of a pyracantha right now that has just been there for uh, the original owner of this property planted it back in the 80s, early 80s and so it must be to China. Yeah. And uh, so I just sprayed a little bit on and it's killing it out but I see there's just a little new growth It's being tenacious. Right, so, right. Okay, so uh, the next one then is uh, over the top. So over the top gives you a chance to spray something where you have grass growing in desirable ornamentals or bedding plants or whatever. And it won't hurt those, it just kills grass. So you spray it on and it will go down and kill the grass. You know how much fun it is to try to get grass out of oh, yeah. ground covers and that sort of thing. Well, that's over the top. It's a little expensive, but it, you, if you weigh what it does compared to what you have to do on that your hands That meticulous knees, little picking, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Small price to pay. Yeah. So the next one is uh, Weed Out, which uh, uh, is just a, a, another product, this 24D product, which basically just burns the, the weeds. You can get it in all, all kinds of different kinds of brand names, and you just use it on your lawn, kills crabgrass, kills broadleaf weeds, very similar to the weed and feed, except that there's no feed. You just, you just spray it on your lawn, and that will kill those out. Then there's uh, Kills All, which is non-selective, uh, uh, it kills whatever you spray it on and it kills it root and all and uh, uh, it's rain fast in about two hours so you don't have to worry about uh, 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 the rain but you know you do it like right now instead of waiting until this afternoon when it's gonna right. run. and it needs the heat and once it gets the heat it will take right off and go right down and kill it root and all no matter what it touches huh. now woody things you still need to use the uh, the, the stump killer, but for soft stuff, that's what you would use the uh, kills all for. So here we have, uh, I, I just brought these along for the heck of it. This one is stump remover. 
If you cut off a ponderosa and you're trying to get it to go a little faster, you drill holes in, you put the stump killer in, and then that causes it to rot faster rather than to have that stump hanging around So you're for just years. speeding up the decomp process. Yes, that's okay. right. And then the other one is root killer. This one is when you flush down your toilet so that it'll kill the roots that are in your sewer pipes. Oh. And then we go to uh, uh, the um, uh, organics. So this one is called grass and weed killer and it's non-selective, which means it'll kill anything. Now this is what we use here in the nursery. We have three wells here at the nursery and we don't want to contaminate those wells. So we have a gentleman with a hula hoe who gets rid of most of them, but in those areas where he can't, we do spray this, uh, uh, it's called natural guard and it's non-selective weed and grass killer. And it's very, very effective. So uh, we like to use it here. And then uh, the second one here is selective, which just means it will uh, not kill the grass, but it'll kill the weeds in grass, just much like the chemical one. And again, that's all organic as well. All organic, yeah. And then this one is uh, called BioSafe, and it's just another organic that will, uh, that will get rid of uh, 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 non-selective. In other words, uh, get rid of anything that it touches. I don't have no experience with this one, but it gives you an idea of what's available. Uh, the next one is uh, selective again. That one goes out into the, uh, 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 like won't hurt the grass, but will kill the, the broad leaves. And let's see, oh, this one is what a lot of people are trying to use, 30% vinegar. So you would not want to put this on your salad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, very, very Tempting though it may be. <laughs> very acidic. And uh, uh, <coughs> what basically what it does is it burns the top of the weeds, which may allow the weed to come back again. But if you keep a, uh, a sprayer handy with this in it, and every time you see them start to come back, you just spray them and you'll keep those weeds down. And eventually with not getting out to the sunlight, it will kill it out. So, but it's, you have to do it over so it's, and over. But it's over. mainly killing uh, the surface and above That's for the right. most part. Yeah. Kills, it kills all the top. Uh -huh. And I do have this in gallons. We've been using this, or they're trying, been trying to use this at one of the community gardens uh, with real, real good success, actually. So. Uh, uh, basically, that's the weed killers. Uh, the only, uh, let's see, we've only got a couple minutes, so I want to definitely want to show uh, this willow right here. This is a weeping willow, and I'm not sure, Chris, whether you can get into like these yellow leaves right up here. If you have yellow leaves and green leaves, no matter what kind of a tree you have, in this summer, what you have is heat stress. So with, with heat stress, it just simply can't get enough water from down here to up there to handle every single leaf. So some of the leaves were gonna fall off. Doesn't mean you're gonna lose your tree. Doesn't mean you need to spray it with $25 worth of stuff. You just uh, get a little more water on it and uh, uh, get help hopefully get through until either the monsoons like we have now or until we cool off and right. then it will be okay. And I brought another one here. Let me get him out of the way. Uh, this is basically the same. If you look at how this one has kind of defoliated in the center, and then you see yellow leaves. Not sure, Chris, whether you can get those or not, but yellow leaves all in here. Yellow and green leaves at the same time. So this tree is very healthy. It's just there's a massive amount of tree. There's a little bit of root down here. So we are unable to, even though we're watering these twice a day, we're unable to get enough in here to maintain all of its foliage. So when it's in the ground, it will put out more roots and it will, it will be able to maintain much better. So uh, I see lots of new growth on here. So the new growth, but it's uh, 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 losing some too. So it just can't support it all. And the next one over here is uh, a, a red bud. And we're getting people that are asking, why are the leaves on my red bud, uh, why are they curling? So uh, that is it's just trying to get away from the sun. So and that's why they're curling all up here on the top. It doesn't mean the tree's dying. It doesn't mean that it, it won't live or that it's not going to look good. It just means that it's so hot that the leaves trying to curl up and get out of the sun. Right. So, uh, and what you want to do is where the leaf is, if you look right where the leaf meets the stem, there's a little bud there. And if it has a bud growing, which this all does, then that means it's in good condition 
And if it loses that leaf because of the heat, it's going to shoot out another one. Well, and I think this all just goes to show, too, that, you know, there, there's obviously lots of different questions that you all can have. Uh, depending on what you're trying to grow, whether it's just trying to get a, a nice healthy looking lawn or you're growing some vegetables or growing some ornamentals, some flowers and things like that. If you have questions, the place to come is Plant Fair Nursery out on Highway 260 in Star Valley. Glenn and the team here really know their stuff and they've got uh, all the products that you'll need uh, to be uh, better at what you're doing, whether it's uh, uh, going uh, all organic or otherwise, they've got the solutions for whatever problems you're facing. And I'm gonna be leaving here with a, a couple of these today. If you've been listening on the radio, don't forget that you can also go back and watch uh, online on KRIMS and Plant Fair Nursery's Facebook pages and actually see the video from uh, the show today and the shows that we do every first Tuesday of the month. So, uh, Glenn, once again, uh, amazing. I can't wait to see what you have for us next month. Okay, well, good. Uh, thank you. You betcha. And thank you for tuning in and listening to uh, Community Spotlight on 96.3 FM KRIM. Come back every morning at this time for something a little bit new and different.